my name's Trevor Melland and I'm an author. I get to explore some of what the um, some people may call the fantasy world. Have you read Gremlins? Uh, no, but I've, I've seen the film. Yeah. Yeah. Now, in, in my world, there are gremlins with bikinis on and when you throw water on them, they turn into more gremlins with more bikinis on. People have said that a lot of your children's work already had quite adult themes, uh, including violence and uh, sex scenes to begin with. This is the world we live in. Children must understand where they come from. It's simple biology. It's, it's a transference of information through fantasy. Some may call me an oddball, but how did the Smurfs make more Smurfs? There was some controversy when your children's works were going to be developed into a feature film, um, but unfortunately you walked away from the project. There was talk of creative differences. I don't know if you're willing to maybe talk about that now. My, my, my lawyer says I, I'm not supposed to talk about it. I can work with such a person. Are you willing for that production to be made, Tommy? Who's Tommy? That's exactly what I said. People don't understand the concept of ferrets and puppets engaging in interspecies relationships. I was just trying to introduce this to the world. So one of your recent books, when it gets to page 23, there's just, there's just four blank pages. These are what I call the, um, the mass debate sheets. These are sheets. When you've read my book and you think to yourself, in that book club, we need a debate about this, but there's a lot of us. So you have a mass debate. And within that, you need sheets to, to evidence exactly what your specific argument is. So the idea is to, to put on those sheets what you masturbate? Yes. Your book, The Great Mystery, uh, which was entirely blank and people said that was just lazy. Lazy. There are critics everywhere. We've got some of the reviews for that one book. One just simply writes, shit, I paid 50 quid for this. And that's how, that's how I want the reader to feel inspired. Shit, I've paid £50 for this. They'll, they'll look at themselves and then they'll take a good look and say, do you know what, Trevor? I'm never going to do this again. Going back to your children's work, you uh, do a lot of your own illustrations. Um, do you find that that's a good way to create the characters? What comes first, the illustrations or the, or the story? This is where you have to dwell in the mind of the creative. Do you think of the idea or does the idea think of you? I ask myself this every day. This is before I illustrate. So yes, I think you're option one. There are theories on the internet that some of the illustrations have hidden meanings, uh, that there's things hidden within the pictures. Um, do you have any anything to say about that? I, I have no cause to, to be part of any occult. I, I, I don't believe in such things. It's, it's up to you how you see things. Speak what of not what you see, even if you are hiding in the tree. Who is the owl that hoots? To whom? To whom? There are no secrets here. Symbols are used everywhere. If you go to a traffic light, that's a symbol. A drama plays a symbol. There are many tapestries of how we weave great architecture comes from the mind, from the light of the mind intertwined. And this is, this is the message I try to deliver to the children. Some may call me a Pied Piper of Minds, 
I'd like very briefly to talk about your very short foray into crime fiction uh, with your novel, The Butler Did It, which on the first line said, The Butler Did It, and kind of gave away the whole ending of the novel. Why did you do that? <coughs> Audiences <coughs> expect <coughs> signs and symbols. Now you heard that crow, but did the crow do it? In my book, the butler would have did it. I don't think a lot of people know that under a different pen name, you wrote a lot of erotic fiction. Splodge. In the road of erotica has been a thrill ride. And we have um, chessboard fantasies. Um, which is a, um, a concept of a wizard who um, uses people as pawns on his erotic chessboard of sexual desire. Grass play. Grass play. My, my third book was probably my favourite book, um, What's in Your Beard? I look at it uh, as one of my best works. That one also had a number of blank pages. The, the fans demanded it. Um, when you put four or five, sometimes six blank pages in a book, fans are inspired. They, 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 they masturbate over my books continuously. There are forums developed. Mas masturbate, mas debate. Gargantuan masturbation sessions. So to any writer out there, explore, follow the rabbit hole, and don't be afraid to, to finger it.